Kính thưa quý vị, chúng tôi Trần Hình Tiết xin kính chào quý vị. Như quý vị đã biết, trong thời gian gần đây, lệnh cấm đi ra ngoài và về cái dịch vụ hãng này đã làm cho chúng ta quan tâm và cũng như vậy anh em chúng tôi cũng không đến studio làm việc thường xuyên được. Nhưng mà nhờ gọi là technology, nên hôm nay chúng tôi xin gửi đến quý vị một cuộc phỏng vấn giữa VNTV và một người Director Public Relations của API sẽ nói với chúng ta về thống kê 2020 có tầm quan trọng đối với dân số của người Á Châu như thế nào. Mời quý vị cùng chúng tôi theo dõi sau đây. Hi Jan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ted. So I know that there's a lot going on right now and thanks for being with us. Um, after everything that we talked about the census last time, you are now representing three organizations, actually two main ones, and now you're also joining the hard to count population and in the count me 2020 coalitions, right? So yes. tell me about why are you be a part of that coalition? So in San Diego, United Way uh, received funds that our governor has set aside for Census 2020 outreach. And that um, program is run through the Census 20, uh, Count Me 2020 Coalition. So uh, the coalition uh, comprises of over 150 community-based organizations um, throughout the county of San Diego. And I represent the Asian Pacific Islander Initiative, where I'm the government and public relations director, and I also consult for Paving Great Futures. Absolutely. So if you, if you can expand a little bit on a topic, we talk about a lot of the hard account populations, which is mainly the Asians, and perhaps the, the Spanish population, why are they considered to be a hard to count? And why are they so important? Well, um, everyone is important. Um, why some segments of the community may be hard to count. Um, they may be immigrants. They may speak English as a second language. And the census may be new to them. Um, the census in the United States is mandated by law for all of us to participate. Yesterday, um, April 1st was census day, which is the kickoff so that, again, we all are trying to get a uh, complete and accurate count, which is important so that we can access $675 billion in federal funding that um, provides uh, programs and services for all of our communities. So when they ask, why is it important? Well, this money is used to uh, build roads, to build um, hospitals, schools. It also funds programs. So for instance, our babies, zero to five years old, um, in the last census, they were hard to count. But if you look at what the projections are when you are a baby for the next 10 years, we're planning for preschool, kindergarten, uh, elementary school. When it comes to our college students, we have federal funding through the free application um, for federal uh, student aid, FAFSA. We also have the uh, federally funded Pell Grant. So these are programs that are important for our children. Uh, for our seniors, that pays for uh, their Medicare, uh, also for affordable housing with Section 8. So there are many aspects um, of, uh, that will affect our quality of life. If uh, we don't participate, we lose the resources, and then it becomes more challenging for all of us. So I believe that the message is pretty clear. I mean, every one of us needed to be participating in this kind of census count. But yes. because of, the, based on the past count, which is about 10 years ago, and now we are still going back to the hard count population, which is the Asians and which is the API is all about. How are us different this time around and why are we considered hard count all the time? Can you have a little bit details on that or 
in five Sure. Um, it's one, educating our community because it was taking so long. Ago. Many of us don't remember what we were doing 10 years ago. And then um, to realize the impact that it has for our next years. So it's educating the community, it's motivating the community. But what's really exciting this time around is that we have technology on our side. Even though that uh, COVID-19 has presented a, a different challenge where we can't be in the studio uh, sitting next to each other, we have uh, historically, but um, this technology today um, presents uh, uh, an avenue for us to still connect and still get the word out. So um, also this census, this is the first time you can complete the census online. And if you go to my2020census.gov, you can complete the census in English or in Vietnamese. It's uh, available in language. And there also is a toll free number also in English. And there's one also um, in Vietnamese. So you can speak in language with someone if um, you need assistance uh, completing the census. And I have that number, 844-461-2020. So we didn't have these uh, tools, the last census. So our hope is that we can close uh, the gap and have more complete count this time around. So you mentioned that we have more technologies to dealing with, you know, the count this time, or at least, you know, the challenges that we didn't have last time is to, to overcome that. But at the same time, we are in the midst of this challenging of the coronavirus. Are you seeing that the population now shunning away from the counts because of this as well? Or are you confident or are you seeing that they are using technology at home? Uh, that, that they can complete it online and the cow could be a little bit more accurate this time or more well i appreciate you asking that because covid19 is actually a perfect example why we need the census so when we heard um, governor newsom give the director to uh directive to shelter in home and they started in the bay area and they said in san francisco they uh, shut down 7 million, 7 million people to shelter in home. How do we know that number? We didn't guess. We didn't go by uh, uh, developers asking how many houses they sold. No, it was the population data collected from the census. Also, when we're looking at the in-language materials, how do we know that Vietnamese is the language needed to communicate these emergency notices. It's through the census. So in a way, this situation, while it presents a challenge, it also provides us testimony of why we need to be counted. So I think now that we're at home and we're looking for things to do, the census is really easy this time. There's only nine questions, nine questions per person in the household. So we have technology, we have time on our hands, and we have in-language material. So my hope is that we'll actually have a better count because we are shelter and home and uh, we need to participate. It's an example of why uh, we need to know how many people are in San Diego. Because if we are quarantined at some point, how many people are we talking about? In what neighborhoods do we need outreach in different languages, right? How many, what, are the hospitals ready to take in um, people? So this is actually, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. Well, um, it's challenging to stay home, but now we have time. And if we're time on our hands and, and uh, partnering with TV to get the message out that my hope is we're going to be motivating our community to participate. Thank you very much for that. Um, so in, in summary, we need to be out in force. We need to be yes. registered. We need to be counted. We need to do yes. all of that so that we can get the, the, the services that we need in the near future yes. for the funding and all of that, right? What else that the census data is used for? Do you have any 
additional data or additional insight that you can share? Sure. So um, when it comes to small business and federal funds for business, it comes through uh, data points. When uh, you are looking at sponsorships or marketing for VHTV, when uh, a client comes in, how do you show that, hey, we have a reach in the Vietnamese community from San Diego to the Bay? It's through census numbers. It helps us with our business. It helps us plan and project what our needs are. So as we see a growth in the South Bay and the east side of Chula Vista, that's one way of projecting of, hey, our, our business um, will thrive here because we have a population that will buy the products and services in our community. So that's another um, way of, of seeing our, our census uh, numbers work for us. And then following this census, once we're done, we will transition into uh, redistricting for our congressional representation, for our state representative rep um, representation. And that is really key, um, something that was really key that happened in the Registrar of Voters in the last census, because there was an increase of Vietnamese residents in San Diego the voter ballot and the voter education materials, working with Michael Vu, there is now, all those marketing collateral is in Vietnamese. And there is also a Vietnamese advisory um, that is provided to the Registrar of Voters. And that is a direct uh, a result from the census. Thank you very much. Um, if they have any other questions or should people or audience of BNTV have any other questions, uh, they can mm -hmm. always contact the numbers that you provided on screen. Is there any yes. other source that you recommend that reach out to get those kind of answers? Uh, no, um, I, I really think just sharing the stories, the testimony of how the census can work for our community, that um, there is a better understanding um, I also would like to reiterate, there are only nine questions. There are not going to be more than nine questions asked on the census. They will not ask for citizenship. They will not ask about legality of here, being here in uh, San Diego. It's only a population count. It's your name, it's your date of birth, your origin, your ethnicity. So um, be confident that this is kept confidential. Um, when you apply for the census, there is a background check. You're, you are sworn to confidentiality. So it is safe and confidential to um, participate in the census. And we really need everyone's participation. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, I know it's hard during this time, but uh, you take the time and be on the air with us and through you know, the remote kind of interview process or you know, the, the new way of doing things. And thank yes. you for preparing the, um, the audience for that kind of information uh, as much as we can during this difficult time. And uh, yes. as BNTV, we continue to partner up with organizations like yourself and uh, also mm -hmm. the Cal E 2020 to do a lot more outreach in the near future. Uh, thanks again for coming on. Well, thank you, uh, Ted, and thank you, Vet TV, um, for your dedication to serve the community because without you, we're not able to reach everyone and we really need everyone to participate. So thank you for all you do and uh, be safe and stay healthy. You too, enjoy.